Hey friends, it's Nick with The Whip Shop, and on today's video, I wanna show you how I maintain a pattern all the way down to the end of the whip without that pattern changing. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. I'm glad you all are here. It was so great to see you guys again at the beginning of this year at the Los Angeles Whip Convention. I got to spend a lot of quality time with my friends who I've known over the years. You all know who you are. And I also got to meet some new people and made new friends on this trip as well. I didn't film nearly as much as I usually do because I was not feeling very well for most of the trip, unfortunately. And I was just kind of out of it for a lot of the whip meet. But regardless, it was still a great time, and I'm so happy to have been able to come out. I made a lot of great memories with you guys, and I'm looking forward to the next one already. Oh, man. Today, we have here in the shop a six foot, 16 plat nylon bullwhip right here. And what I'm gonna show you how to do is set up this. This is a chevron pattern that we can see here. And if I move all the way down the whip, you'll notice something happening. That chevron pattern is decreasing in strands, but the overall shape of that chevron is not changing. In other words, we start with six strands here at the beginning, and as we work our way down, now we can see two strands here. Further down the whip we go. Finally, we just have one strand on the left and right. Two strands total that make up that chevron pattern all the way down to the end of the whip. If you are short for time, I'll let you know right now how I do this. I drop two strands at the same time. Now let's go into a little bit of detail of what I mean by that. When I drop two strands at the same time, it doesn't necessarily always mean that the strands that I'm dropping are perfectly across from each other. In other words, there could be a strand right here on the right and one maybe two up on the left side. And what I mean by dropping two strands at the, at the what I mean by dropping two strands at the same time is dropping both of those strands in that sequence between the opposite colors. And this is going to make a lot more sense when we actually get into this tutorial today. It's probably one of those things that I can't really explain well without pointing it out as I'm doing it. That's why I'm making this video. In addition to that, when we have a certain pattern on the top and bottom of our whip like this, if we turn it to the side, you will see an alternate pattern. There's kind of a staggered red and black that goes the, all, all the way down on the sides. Um, so if you do establish a pattern on the top, it is going to look different on the side. That's just the nature of the way the herringbone pattern works. So don't let that catch you off guard. Now you may be asking yourself, I have a whip that has a pattern composed of three colors. Well, if you wanted to maintain a pattern with three colors all the way down to the end of the whip, you would have to end the whip in more than four strands. All of my nylon bull, bull whips to this day end with four strands, a four point fall hitch. So if you have three colors and you want that pattern to maintain itself all the way down, what you're gonna need to do is end your whip with six strands. Now consequently, if you end your whip in six strands, that is going to add some thickness to the end of the whip. Six strands just take up more surface area, or I should say more volume than four strands. If you do, however, have a whip that's eight feet, nine feet, maybe even more, a heavier whip is not necessarily going to be affected by those extra two strands at the end. On a six foot whip, you'll notice a little bit of difference in the ease of cracking. You're gonna have to throw it a little bit harder to get it to crack uh, with the same force. Uh, but like I said, it does make a difference, but it's not the end of the world. And that's just one of the sacrifices that you're gonna have to make if you want that pattern consisting of three or more colors to continue all the way down to the end of the whip. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I set up this specific pattern in chevrons like this. We're gonna be going through the handle. I'm gonna show you which strands that I chose red, which strands that I chose black, and I'm gonna show you how I set up the pattern, a little bit of two strand plaiting on the handle, and then I'm gonna show you every single drop point that I chose to do in order to maintain this pattern. Thank you guys so much for being here and I hope that you enjoy the tutorial. 
Okay guys, I have my six foot bullwhip in the vise here and we're getting ready to tie on the overlay. So right here I have all of the strands for the overlay. Now in this particular whip, I want one of the reds and one of the blacks to continue all the way down to the end of the whip. And even though we're going to have fewer strands that make up this pattern, the shape of the pattern and the symmetry of the pattern is going to be the same. This whip only has two colors, red and black. So we're going to set it up in such a way that this black reaches the bottom as well as this red. And it's going to end in four plaid. So these are my two longest strands right here. Next, I have two more red strands and the rest remaining are black. Now there's a little guide up there in the upper left hand corner if you want to follow along exactly the same pattern that I'm using. You can see the strands that are highlighted in red up there. So you can copy that if you'd like. Now because this whip is going to be a 16 plat whip, what I'm going to do is divide these up, four in one hand, four in the other, like this. I want four black strands and then the rest are going to be three red strands and one black strand. So if you've seen in my previous videos, I like to tie on the overlay at the transition, get things snug, and then push it up to the top. I find that works a lot more easy, easily, easier. One of those words. And next we're going to grab our remaining strands and just find the ends of those. There's the first one right there. Next one. And what we're gonna do is we're going to feed four ends of these strands through this little eye right here. Not worried about the orientation of these strands, I'm just getting them through. And now I'm going to pull each one until I find the middle. And as you, if you've noticed, I've marked the middles by actually cutting the strands in half, removing the guts, and then fusing them back together. So those little melted points will tell us where the middles are. There's the next one. Now you might not be able to see it, but I can certainly feel it when it arrives. It's right there. I can feel that rough edge of that melted point slipping past my hand. Finally, we have one black strand that's just been introduced into this group of three red strands. Went a little too far there. And there it is. Now at this point, we do want to be mindful of the orientation of the strands. We're going to zoom in just a little bit here. So making sure that the seams or the metal middles of the strands are behind the whip right here. And on the strands that we just added, make sure they're right about where they're about to go underneath that first black strand. So those look good. Now what we want to do is make sure all of the reds are on the top. So as you can see, this black strand needs to come down just like that. Now we can begin. We're going to be doing a two strand diamond plait for the handle of this whip. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that first. Two strands at the same time. We're going to go under two, over two, under two, over two. 16 strand diamond using two strands at the same time. From the upper left around the back, under, over, under, over. Two strands at the same time. We're going to go, oops, hang on. Yeah. Two strands at the same time around the back, under, over, under, over. Just like that. And I'm going to continue this diamond plait just the way you see right now until we reach the transition where we will be going into a herringbone plait. Now we're plaiting along on our two strand diamond pattern. And if any point you're unsure as to whether the orientation is correct, meaning that when we pick it up and transition into a herringbone after the handle stops, 
if you are still in the correct orientation, one thing that I like to do is keep on plaiting those strands. So around the back, two at a time, under two over two, under two over two. And we want to arrive at a point where there are three strands of red right next to each other uh, and evenly across from each other on the left and the right side. So if we keep plaiting, we're not seeing it right away. Just keep on going two strands at the same time like this. And now this confirms that we are still in the correct orientation. See, we have three red strands on the left with one black underneath it. And also on the right, we have three red strands right next to each other with one black strand beneath it. And that tells us that we have the correct orientation to begin our chevron pattern once we leave the handle and transition past the handle. So everything looks good. And if at any point you do this and you cannot arrive at a certain spot where you have three across from each other, three reds across from each other, or any color you're using, simply back up and more than likely one of the strands got twisted when you were doing two at the same time. Same goes for herringbone. If you find that things get a little shifted like that, just back up, you will find your little mistake. It's easy to do, easy to correct, and also easy to accidentally cross a strand over one another, especially on these diamond braids. So we have about three and a half, four more inches to go of this diamond braid before we transition to the herringbone, but I figured I'd just let the camera roll for a minute or two to just show you guys the diamond plait motions. I know uh, it can be a complicated pattern to do, you know, as far as strands twisting on you. So this is how I like to do it. So after each pass, what I do is grab each strand, push it up and back, Make sure that these two strands are not twisted on each other. Just kind of pushing up and back like that. Same thing for the right hand side. And now we can take some strands from the upper left two at the same time around the back. We're going under, over, under, over. Just like that. Pulling each strand independently from its pair strand that it went with. And around the back, always making conscious effort to kind of peek around the backside there to make sure that there's no spaces. It can become so easy, especially when you're beginning making whips to get so focused on keeping your seam straight and then the back ends up being a little bit gappy and has some spaces there. So after about Four passes on each side, I pause, and each strand, one at a time, I'll pull at that 45 degree angle. Just tightens all the strands and ensures there's no spaces, like this. Hold this with my thumb and do the same thing on the right hand side, in order, from top to bottom. Just like that. And we'll do one more, and then I'll carry on. So see that it's really easy to accidentally twist those and then go through here. I want to make sure that they're in the right orientation, red on top, black on the bottom, under, over, under, over. Now see these two strands here are wanting to cross, so I just take the correct one, reach in here, push it where it needs to be, like that. Kind of give things a little shake like that, using my fingernails to kind of mold things into place. And we'll do the right hand side. like that. Again, checking for the correct orientation. We got three reds right next to each other, three reds right next to each other with no black strands in between them, and then a black on the bottom. So I'm going to carry on until I reach the transition and I'll meet up with you there. Okay, at this point our handle is complete and it is time to switch into our herringbone in 16 strands. That's under four on the left, under four on the right. Now as you can see here, we have three red strands right next to each other, no black strands in between, and directly across we have three more red strands with no black strands in between. 
This is proof that our pattern is set up. We didn't make any mistakes up here. We didn't cross any strands over, which is sometimes easy to do. So if you get to this point and you see that maybe it's staggered, we have a black strand across from a red strand, just follow your way back up and see more than likely one of the strands on the sides crossed over another one like this, or perhaps a black strand may have crossed over a red or vice versa. Just make sure that all the strands are not crossing over one another in various places. With that being said, once you reach this area, the end of the handle, and it's time to transition into the herringbone, you don't have to have this exact sequence set up like this, meaning that there's one black strand below these three red and the same on the right. You might have it in such a way that there's three red strands and three black strands underneath. It doesn't matter the way they're oriented as long as you have three reds right next to each other on the left and the right, just like that. So that being said, let's go ahead and go right into a herringbone pattern in 16 strands. We're gonna grab a strand from the upper left, this one, around the back, and we're gonna go under four over four, just like this. Now the right-hand side might be a little more tricky. Grabbing that strand from the upper left, we're gonna go around the back, and we're gonna go under four over four. Now you'll notice when I cross this over, this red strand kind of wants to creep to the front. We just push it back to where it needs to be, like that. And we're gonna continue this sequence under four, over four. And momentarily, we're gonna get confirmation that we have the strands set up in a proper way to where we can achieve that chevron pattern in red. And I'm just going under four, over four, alternating from left to right. Here come our red strands momentarily. Remember, I'm pulling extra tight here because this is the transition of the whip. This is the part of the whip that goes through the most force as far as leverage goes. We want this to be nice and stiff to make the whip nice and springy. Under four, over four. And here come our red strands. Look at them falling into place. We have two more to go before we'll see our first chevron. And there it is, right there. Continuing on, under four, over four. Just like that. And we are going to continue on, under four, over four, until it's time to drop some strands. Now back in the day, I used to drop strands at a certain point, meaning that I would reach the 21 inch mark or whatever and say, okay, I'm at 21 inches, time to drop strands. Nowadays, I drop strands more so by feel. In other words, there isn't a particular exact place to drop strands when I make a whip. I kind of do it by feel. I examine the strands. I kind of see if the edges are starting to fold up a little bit. We're starting to get a tad bit of crowding and I'll drop there. And this will make more sense as we work our way down. So as of right now, I'm just gonna go under four over four until it's time to drop some strands. All right, so we've been plaiting for about 21 inches and it is time to drop the first two strands. Now notice I said two strands. As mentioned in the intro of this video, in order to maintain a pattern symmetrically on both the left and right side, we have to drop, I shouldn't say we have to, the way I do it is I drop two strands at the same time. And I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna show you how it's done. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in. Reposition the whip just a little bit. Now here we go. This is the strand that we're gonna be dropping from the right hand side. As you can see, we're running low on length. And also I feel this is a good place to drop because things are starting to show signs of becoming crowded if I were to keep going. On the left hand side, we're gonna be dropping this strand right here. Now you, know, you will notice that the strand that I'm dropping from, ugh, I cannot talk during this video. The strand that I'm dropping from the right hand side does not have to be directly across from the one on the left. For example, this one is four strands from the bottom. On the left, the one we're dropping is only one stra uh, two strands up from the bottom, right here. So what we're gonna do, notice how all the red strands are on the top right now, so we don't have to worry about them. 
I'm gonna drop this one right now. I'm gonna give it a pull, give the one above it a pull, the one underneath it a pull, and here it goes, swinging it underneath these three, pulling it gently to the middle. Gently is key. And just snugging it over here lightly so we don't pull it prematurely. A little bit more. I like that. And we're gonna keep on plaiting normally for a few sequences. From the upper right, around the back, under four, over four on the left. And on the right, under four over three, because we just dropped that one strand. Just like that. From the upper right hand side, around the back, under four over four. And on the right hand side, we're gonna go under four over three once again. And now, as you can see, this strand is in a great position to drop. It is now four from the bottom, like the one on the right was. And the reason I waited is because I wanted to establish, establish a little bit more pressure on top of that strand before dropping it. These strands are gonna help hold it down and hold that angle. So again, we're gonna do on the left-hand side what we did to the right. To give the strand above it a pull, the one we're dropping a pull, and the three below a little tug there. And now we're gonna drop that strand the same way we did on the right side. Give it a little tug, lift these three, and pull it to the center, and just coaxing it to the middle like that. Now things might look a little sloppy right here, temporarily. So we're just gonna individually kind of tighten that seam up. You'll see these still need to be tightened. We'll get to those in a second. And now I'm gonna go ahead and plait under four over three on both the left and right hand side. And this is our new sequence. We are uh, plaiting 14 strands now. 14 plait under four over three. And you'll notice that our chevron pattern is still alive and well. The only thing that's different now is this black section is going to have shortened up one strand, one V will be gone because these are that V, the strands that we just dropped. Under four over three on the left and the right hand side. Now those strands that were a little loose on top are starting to tighten up, I like that. Things are falling into place. Just trying to keep these two strands that we dropped in the middle. Right in the middle like that. And at this point, it's time to tighten. The final, for the final time, we're going to tighten these strands that we just dropped. First one, I'm gonna give it a little pull we see it tightening right there. And the other one from the right that we dropped, you can see it tightening right there. Not too much, just like that. Now, I'm gonna grab my scissors, I'm gonna cut the first strand like that, and then about an inch down at an angle, I'm gonna cut the other strand. What a sloppy cut that was. Now this is optional. You don't have to do what I'm about to do, but I like to do it because it ensures that that strand is never gonna come back out. It's probably overkill, but I like to do it anyway. Press it into the core. Strand number two. Press it into the core like that. And now we can keep on plaiting under four over three. And I'll go ahead and plait some of this whip while the camera's rolling so that you can see that that chevron pattern is still there. Under four over three, under four over three, currently in 14 plat. And there we go. Not much of a difference, guys. 
The only difference is our black section shortened up by one strand on the left and right. One V is gone now. I'm gonna continue on under four over three until it's time to drop another strand and we'll do the same procedure that we just did. Okay, we have reached about the 26 inch mark and it is time to drop a couple more black strands. Now on the right hand side, we have one that's all ready to go. But on the left hand side, this is our strand that we're dropping, it's at the bottom. Not to worry, we're gonna do the same thing that we did a few minutes ago. First, I'm gonna grab the strand that we're gonna drop here, pull the one above it, the strand itself, and the one below, maybe all the way to the bottom, why not? And we're gonna lift it and pull it under those three below. Same procedure here. Being careful not to pull too hard, and I'll show you what happens if we do prematurely. That's gonna happen right there. So we don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, we want that to happen. Of course we don't want it to happen. So that's what happens if you pull the strand too quickly, uh, too soon, I should say. The reason we wait and just pull it snug instead of tight is because we left the strands on top of it, hold it down, and maintain that angle so that when we pull it, those strands protect that, what, just you, what you just saw from happening. So let's do that again. Pulling it to the middle, like that. And it's just gonna hang out there in the middle for now. Now, on the right-hand side, we're grabbing a strand from the upper left. We're gonna go under three, over three. We have six strands on the right-hand side now. Continue that a little bit. Under four, over three on the left still. On the right, under three, over three. Under four, over three on the left. Keep that in the middle. Under three, over three on the right like that. And at this point, here's our strand in position from the left that we need to drop. We're going to pull the one above it. I'm going to pull this too. I don't like that. Get everything nice and tight. The strand itself, we just pulled that all the way down. It's a good habit to, when you're about to drop, just pull all the strands from each side. It's quick enough to just breeze through all of them. Why not? So here's the one we're dropping. Again, I give it one pull, lift the underneath it and pull it to the center. Just coaxing it over to the middle again. And there's our two drop strands in the middle. Let me reposition real quick. And now on both the left and right hand side, we are going under three over three. Just like this, under three over three. We are currently in 12 plat. Now I used to make all of my whips begin in 12 plat, and that made for very steep angles on the strands. If you're trying to plat a whip in 12 strands with the same diameter belly that we started with, to compensate, the strands are really gonna be shallow, those bites, those, those uh, herring bones. So 16 is the way to go in my opinion for a lot of 550 nylon bull whips that have two plaited bellies. There we have it, under three, over three. And now my friends, you can see, again, the chevron pattern has not changed shape, but it has lost another V. So the black is shrinking, and then finally, later on, the red will begin to shrink as well because we cannot carry all these strands out to the end, obviously. We're gonna be ending in four plat. So the pattern will always be there, it'll just be smaller. So I'm gonna establish a couple more strands on top of our drop strands and then we can go ahead and pull those tight. Under three, over three. Under three, over three. Fix my microphone real quick. There we go. Under three, over three. So right there, that's one of the strands that we just dropped. So is this right here. Watch, one of them's gonna move. First one right there, you can see it going into place. And now we can drop our other one. Watch this right there. There it goes. And those are our drops. Same thing, take the scissors, a snip, a snip, a melt and a melt.
press it into the core. And press it into the core like that. And continuing on, under three over three. Chevron pattern is still looking nice and healthy. And we will continue on until it's time to drop two more strands at the same time. Now we have reached about the 32 inch mark on this overlay and we're about ready to drop two more strands. And I wanna talk about something right now. Now it can be a little bit daunting to drop two strands at the same time. And a lot of the worry stems from the idea that the taper is going to be abruptly decreased too quickly because you drop two strands at the same time. Ideally, we don't drop two strands at the same time. Ideally, for example, if you have a solid color whip, you drop a strand from the right, then you plat three, four, maybe a few more inches, and then you drop the other one. Um, that's something that we don't have the luxury of doing for this type of pattern because we want it to stay the same all the way down. But something that you can do to kind of combat that whole idea of the taper becoming too quick at a certain point where you're dropping two strands, that's twice the volume that you're dropping. Instead of one at the same time, you're dropping two strands at the same time. So instead, think of it this way. If this was a solid color whip, I might drop one strand right now. But because I'm dropping two, I want to wait just a few more inches and still, until things start to just get a little bit on the brink, on the edge of becoming uncomfortable as far as strand crowding goes. So right now, things are starting to get a little bit crowded. And that's nothing that can't be overcome with rolling the whip once we're done. But if this was a solid color whip, I'd be dropping right now. Because I'm dropping two strands at the same time, I'm kind of hanging in there and just letting that play out a little bit more. Letting the diameter of that belly shrink down a little bit more before I drop those strands because I'm dropping two at the same time. And that's something that you can practice to help combat, combat, com combat, how do you say that word? Prevent, we'll just go with that. Prevent that taper from happening too abruptly. So see, I'm just carrying this out. If this was a solid color whip, I would have already dropped a strand, but I'm waiting, I'm holding off until the right moment. So we have been plaiting down and we have reached about the 34 inch mark. And as I mentioned earlier, if this was a solid colored whip, I probably would have dropped somewhere up here but we're holding off until things get a little bit dicey as far as crowding goes. We're still at the point here where there's a tad bit of crowding, but all that crowding will quickly go away when we roll the whip after it's finished. And we're waiting to do that. We want that little extra fringe of crowding occurring to compensate for dropping two strands at the same time. That's a decent amount of volume to be letting go all at once as it were. So this time we're gonna be dropping red strands. That's just the way that I cut these out. So our red chevron is gonna shrink on this drop. So here we go. The first one, um, let's see here. We're actually gonna drop from the left-hand side first, simply because the one on the left happens to be shorter than the one on the right. Although it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be trimming them anyway. So here's the strand from the left. As you can see, we have all the reds together still. Here's one we're going to be dropping. I'm just going to go through here and tighten every one of those strands up first. Do the same thing on the right hand side. Just a little tug on all of them. Set us up for success. All right, from the left, here's our strand we're dropping. We're going to pull it, lift the two this time below, and just gently pull it to the middle. And we're gonna do the same, at the same time, we're gonna grab the other strand from the right-hand side, give that a little tug, lift these two, and swing this to the middle as well. Now I will say that as we work our way down the whip, it becomes a little bit more challenging to get those drop points to look good, to get them to blend in with the rest of the whip. So now we have these two strands dropped, now, we are in 10 plaits, so from the right, around the back, we're gonna go under three over two. And really, it kind of makes it more difficult as we work our way down to, it becomes more challenging 
to keep those two strands that we dropped in the middle. And under three over two on the right as well. Under three over two. Under three over two. And once we establish a little bit more pressure in the form of more strands on top of what we just dropped, we'll give these our final pulls and we'll snip them and melt them. You can see they're right there, two strands right next to each other. Underneath it is tightening. Just like that. And let's do one more for good measure. One more right there. Okay. So as we can see, our chevron is still intact. It's just shrunken a bit. Now these are the two strands that we dropped. Watch them tighten into place. There's the first one. And there's the second one right there. Okay. And now let's give them a snip and a melt. And this just happens to be the 36 inch mark, the halfway point of this overlay. Melt it into the core. And the other one. Right there. And continuing on, we are now in under two, excuse me, we are now in under three over to on both the left and right side. And I want to continue on to show you that chevron pattern. Still intact. Tacked. That kind of sounds like taxes, doesn't it? <sighs> Tax season's coming up, friends. I always dread it. Is what it is though, isn't it? All right, here we are. Chevron pattern is still alive. We're gonna continue on under three over two until it's time to drop the next strands. Okay, we have been plaiting and we have reached about the 45 inch mark on this overlay. And I want to elaborate a little bit more on what it means to drop two strands at the same time. Kinda of wanna elaborate a little bit more on what we spoke about in the intro of this video. So when I say dropping two strands at the same time, I don't necessarily mean dropping two strands at the same time directly across from each other. What I mean to say by this is that if I drop this strand here, and this is the strand that I'm dropping from the other side, I don't have to drop it right when I drop the one from the right. I can continue some strands over the top. Like this one, we're not worried about that because we're not dropping it. So I can put that there, you know, and I can take another one from the top as long as I don't drop the first strand into place and then keep going to where the strand that we're going to drop goes around again for another time. How can I explain this better? I'm having a hard time explaining this right now. I'll be honest. If this is the strand that we're dropping from the right and this is the strand that we're dropping from the left. I want to drop them from their current positions. And maybe that's obvious to you guys. I really don't know. I'm trying to think of it in such a way that I would if I was learning or how I learned this. I don't remember how it was learning this. But if I'm dropping this strand from the right, this strand from the left shouldn't go anywhere. Although we can still move strands from that side around the back to build more underneath it. Once we're ready to drop the strands, those strands should never leave their places until dropped. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't know why it was so difficult for me to uh, communicate, communicate that to you. That's all I meant to say by that, dropping two strands at the same time. It means wherever they're currently resting, we don't touch those particular strands until we're dropping them, but we can still shuffle strands around and stack more underneath them. That's what I mean by that. That's what I mean by dropping two strands at the same time. Whew, boy, that was crazy. Why was it so hard to talk about? Anyway, as we were saying, 
we've reached the 45 inch mark. We're gonna drop a strand from the right. Let's go ahead and do our little thing where we tighten all of our strands from top to bottom. And from the left. And here it is, pulling under these red. We're back to dropping black strands now. Pull that to the middle, not too hard. Here's a prime example of what we just talked about. I'm gonna grab some strands from the top that aren't that strand and stack them underneath that one strand. Like this, now we're under two over two on the right. So see, we just moved one from the top. This didn't go anywhere. Now we have two underneath and I feel that's sufficient. I'm gonna give it a pull, the two strands underneath it a pull and swing it underneath. And as I mentioned earlier, as we work our way down, it starts to become more difficult to hold those two strands that we dropped in the middle. Now on both the left and right, we're under two over two. This is an eight plat. Under two over two, under two over two. Keep those little guys in the middle. And one more, and I think we can pull those nice and tight. Here's the first one. Not much to hang on to there, is there? It's good to have a little pair of pliers to help you pull those really short strands. And here's the one across from it right there. You know what it's time for, don't you? Why? A snip and a melt, of course. It's a little bit short. It's not really great to have them the same length like that. I'd like a little more space. So to fix my error just now, I'm going to back up a couple and just trim that a little shorter. And now we can go ahead and give that a little melt. Push it in and the other one. Under two over two. This can also be kind of a hot spot for gaps and spaces when you're dropping down from 10 plat to 8 plat. So, really paying attention when you're platting. Each strand you grab, kind of push it and lock it into place with the strand right above it. So, pushing with the thumb more up than anything else. And then as the belly thins out, it'll take care of itself, but just pay a little extra close attention to push those strands adjacent to the ones above. And once again, we have confirmation that our chevrons of red are still intact. They are the same shape, they just have shrunken. Under two, over two. I'm gonna continue on until it's time to drop more strands. I'll see you there, my friends. So we have reached about the 53 inch mark and it's time to drop another strand. So these here that you see are just the tails from the second belly. So we're continuing to plat on under two over two. And momentarily we're going to be dropping two more red strands. Now usually at this point, a lot of people will kind of abandon the dropping two strands at the same time process just to maintain good taper since this is a really important part of the whip where we want to make sure that the taper is maintained. And now coming down to this point right here, we see we have eight strands over two core strands. And from the right side, here's our red strand that we're going to be dropping. Tighten all these up. From the left, tighten all these up as well. Now the first thing I'm gonna do here is drop this red strand to the middle. And this is going to become part of the new core now. Same thing with the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this one now, lifting that black one, 
dropping it to the middle, just like that. And now I'm going to snip this strand right here. This is the remaining core strand. And now temporarily we do have three strands in the core. And now we are going under two over one on the right and under two over one on the left. This is currently six plat. Looks good. Now very quickly, I'm going to snip out this remaining black strand in the core. So now I just have two of those strands that we just dropped. That's all there is for the core. And this is kind of following my 2020 current nylon bullwhip making method video. So we can see here's the two strands we dropped. I'm going to give that one a pull and the other one a pull. Again, we are still maintaining our chevron pattern, except now it's just two strands that make up that V. And as we continue to drop strands towards the end of the whip, we're kind of running on low pixels as it were. So even though that chevron is still there, it might not look exactly like a chevron when you're really close up, but it is still a chevron. And continuing on, under two, over one, until it's time to drop the final set of strands. Now this is about the five foot mark here. So what I'm going to do at this point is snip out, again, one of those core strands, a little bit closer. And I'm going to continue my under two, over one. And then we'll be dropping more strands. This is currently a six plat. And here we are, we've arrived a little over five feet. And it's time to drop two more strands, which will be the final strands that we're dropping for this whip. Let's get into position here. Let's see. This is the one that we're gonna be dropping, so let's go ahead and put it where it needs to be. Establish one strand on top of it, like this. So the one from the middle, this is the black strand that we're gonna drop. I'm gonna give it a pull, lift this red one, swing it to the middle, and as soon as we do, we're gonna trim out that core strand, that red core strand, very gently, like that. And then from the left-hand side, this is the strand that we're gonna be dropping. So I'm gonna stack one more on top of it, like this. And here's the strand, I'm gonna give it a pull, swing it to the middle, just like that. I'm not gonna snip that secondary strand out just yet. And now we're going under one over one. As you can see, this is our final sequence here. Under one over one, four plat. And my friends, up until the very end, we can still see that red chevron pattern. A little bit hard to discern, as I mentioned earlier, when we're right up close to it, but it is the same, just with fewer strands. And now we can give those two black strands that we dropped a little pull, just like that. And I'm going to trim one of them out. Doesn't really matter which one we trim out at this point, they're both fairly long. And now we can keep on plaiting under one over one. So you can see the black chevron right here went from four total strands, four total strands down to just two strands. And this is how we're ending the whip with the exception of the core being gone the last few inches and I'll meet up with you there. At about the 65 inch mark, I am snipping out the core strand completely. 
Now we are plaiting four strands under one over one over nothing. We are not currently plaiting over a core at the very end of this whip. And I found that this allows for an extremely thin point that is very aerodynamic. This is not the right way to do it, or I should say this is not the only way to do it. This is just how I like to do it. A lot of other fantastic whip makers out there choose to use an English eye or a different, uh, an, an alternative point for their whip. And that's something that I really want to experiment with in the near future. So friends, our chevron pattern is still alive in our red and in our black. So we're going to carry out this whip all the way to six feet, tie on a fall, and this thing will be done with the exception of a couple of knots. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching this video. If you're new to this channel, this is a place where we make video tutorials about whip making, as well as covering whip related events, a few interviews here and there with other whip makers and performers. So if that sounds like something you guys might be interested in, there's many more videos on the way. Please do like the video and subscribe if you feel that these videos are helpful to you. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video.